Hey guys, Vess here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to my review of the Armo Raider XL. Now this is a 1.8 scale two wheel drive brushless buggy that's actually uh, sharing the same chassis found on the Armo Fury trucks. Now they are a 1.10 scale short course truck, but of course when you convert it into a buggy, it becomes a 1.8 scale even though it has the exact same chassis. Uh, now the good thing about this particular buggy is that it does have the aluminum vertical plates uh, reinforcing the chassis. So with the extra weight of the roll cage and the extra speed of the brushless system. Definitely a welcome addition to this particular car to have the twin vertical plates. Also has an aluminium uh, plate that goes on the roof here uh, of the car and it has some aluminium bracing on the front and rear shock towers. Overall, I have to say that I'm actually very happy with this car. However, there are a couple of things that you really need to watch out for, and uh, I'm gonna run you through those very quickly. First and foremost are the rear tires. I have to say I'm actually very unhappy with these rear tires. Um, I don't like them very much at all. I think the tread patterns are all wrong and uh, they're just a very, very hard rubber compound. So it's very difficult to find a terrain that these actually grip well on. Uh, I found that probably the best terrain would be short grass. That would be where you get the most grip with them. Uh, but if you're planning to run this on dirt or gravel or even on the road, you're gonna find that these tires are really lacking in grip. Not just that, but I've also had mine unglue from the rims, which is something that's becoming a bit of a common occurrence with a lot of these armor vehicles. I don't know if they need to uh, you know, hire somebody else to uh, glue these tires on so they can do a proper job, or if they need to change brands of glue. Uh, but uh, yeah, quite a number of my uh, armor vehicles have actually had glue, uh, the tires unglue from the wheels. Now, uh, that's problem number one. Problem number two are the rear dog bones popping out. It seems as though they're a couple of millimeters short. I actually went out uh, one time to try and film my 3S running video with this car, and uh, within a few minutes, they uh, popped out about three or four times. I gave up, came home, and decided to fix it. Now, the way that I fixed it was by introducing a couple of bits of nitro fuel tubing on the inside of each outdrive cup between, uh, you know, at each end of the dog bone. What that does is it centers the dog bones in the outdrive cups and stops them from shifting around. This prevents them from popping out. Ever since I've done that, no more dog bones popping out, which has been excellent. So uh, that's one way to fix it. Uh, there's probably other remedies out there. You can perhaps even try and find dog bones that are a couple of millimeters longer and you don't have to use that, uh, that mod. But this is something that uh, I think Armour need to address in the future because yeah, dog bones popping out is not a good thing, especially if you lose them. I've been very lucky not to lose any of mine, but I know, uh, you know there's a good chance out there that some people might lose the odd one here and there. And then, uh, you know, you gotta go out and spend more money to, to fix something that just shouldn't be happening. Another thing to watch out for are the plastic shock caps. Now, I have to say that at this price point, which is about 370 odd dollars US, I would have thought that Armour would have upgraded these shocks. I think that these are the exact same shocks found on the Armour Fury trucks. And although the shocks actually work very well, I'm very happy with the suspension performance of these shocks. It would have been nice due to the extra weight of the car and the extra speed that they, you know, at least had aluminum shock caps on these guys and um, of course you know the uh, the wish list here would be to to have proper aluminum shocks all throughout the the buggy but uh, that's not to be so just keep an eye out on your shock caps you might find that they might pop out here and there because they have popped out for me on a couple of occasions uh, last but not, not least is the uh, Dean's plug that comes included with the car uh, these Dean's plugs that uh, armor have been supplying with their RCs um, Obviously, they're not genuine Deans, they're, they're you know, a T-plug of sorts. Um, and uh, one of the problems that I've had is the springs actually kind of separate from the main plug itself. They open up and it makes it very difficult to plug your batteries in after you know, a few sort of battery packs. You'll find that they uh, become a bit of a nuisance. Uh, I'm yet to swap mine over, but I will be swapping mine over uh, very shortly. I know that Armour are going to be including XT90s in their future 1.8 scale vehicles such as the Centon, Creighton, Talion and Typhon. Um, I don't know if they're going to do the same thing here. I, I would assume probably not because it is a much, much smaller car. But uh, I would uh, highly encourage them to uh, you know, look at changing the, the, the plugs into either a better quality plug uh, if they want to stay with the Deans or perhaps going maybe to an XT60 plug for example. Um, I think that would be a good option as well for something like this because yeah, these plugs are just uh, no good. 
Now, uh, I'm gonna very quickly just cover off the remote uh, before we get down to the final scoring. This is the remote that it comes with. Um, well, it's just one like it, I suppose. Uh, I reviewed this remote uh, plenty of times in the past. Four double A's, usual trimmings on the back, as well as steering dual rate, which is a great thing. Drop down wheel, good feel in the hand, and of course you have a collapsible antenna as well. Never had an issue with these remotes, but I have had a couple of people comment on my videos or even on Facebook saying that they've had some problems uh, with these um, Armour remotes. I've had several of them, even from uh, different brands, uh, you know, different companies that have the exact same remote, just uh, branded differently. And uh, I've never had a problem. So I don't know if I've been extremely lucky or if perhaps they've just been a little bit unlucky. Either way, those remotes for me have been fine. What I have done to the, to the buggy though is I've actually swapped out my remote and I've gone for this one, which is a Spectrum DX2E. Now this came out of my Viterra Halix, which comes with AVC, which stands for Active Vehicle Control. What that means is that it has a, a gyro and it helps steer the car um, not just with throttle control, but also with your steering. On a two-wheel drive buggy, it makes sense to have something like that. And I have to say that, uh, you know, my Halix never really needed it, although it was fun to use it, and it was interesting to see how it, you know, how the, the technology kind of helped the, steer the car and control the car. It's a four-wheel drive monster truck. It doesn't really make sense to have AVC on four-wheel drive vehicles, uh, because they're, you know, they're, they're fairly easy to control albeit, um, you know, it's obviously, it's nice to have a helping hand, but I haven't seen too many uh, RC companies release AVC technology or, or TSM or anything like that on two wheel drive vehicles. And I have to say, after installing it in this buggy, I absolutely love it. I think that this is where uh, technology like AVC belongs on a two wheel drive vehicle like this. Um, to really help you uh, drive the vehicle to its full potential and then slowly turn down your AVC uh, as you get used to the car and get used to the grip and begin to do all your tuning and everything else to the point where you don't need AVC anymore. You really begin to challenge yourself and, um, and use the buggy uh, you know, in its raw form without any assistance. If you do decide to go with any sort of AVC or gyro technology in your RC, make sure that you do have a G digital servo because I plugged it in not knowing that the stock servo was an analog and I burnt it out within the first couple of minutes. Of course, then I had to upgrade the uh, servo and uh, it's been fine ever since. Other than that, I have to say that I'm very happy with this car. It's taken a beating. It's very fast. Uh, the brushless system is fantastic. It can push the car upwards of 60 miles an hour, which I did test out. They do give you some extra gearing in the box so you can uh, play around with the gearing until you find something, you know, the type of tune that you're happy with. Um, I find that even if I'm running the tall gearing and just stick to 2S, motor temps and ESC temps are actually uh, fairly reasonable and I don't really feel the need to use it on 3S at all. I probably only use it on 3S if I decide to go a bit crazy or just to do some speed runs. But 2S, even with the tall gearing, is totally fine. The car can handle it and it handles beautifully. So overall, I have to say I'm, I'm very happy with it. Now, uh, just to close this off and do a final score on the Armor Raider XL, uh, let's uh, score the electrics. Now, this of course covers your steering servo, motor, ESC, and of course the overall speed of the car. Uh, as I said, I'm very happy with the electrics in this uh, in this buggy. Um, although the stock servo did blow out on me, but that was my own fault by uh, connecting AVC to it. So I have to say, you know, it gets a four out of five. Um, Probably the only reason why I don't give it a five out of five is just for because of the Dean's connector. I wish that they had a you know a better quality plug on here, just because yeah I've had so many issues with these Dean's from Armor and uh, this one's no exception. So I'm going to deduct a point for that. So four out of five for the electrics, uh, drivetrain. The only issue I've really had with the drivetrain is the dog bones popping out. Um, other than that, uh, the diff and gears and everything else has held up perfectly. Uh, no issues to report here. So. Uh, uh, very simple layout being a two-wheel drive and for that it gets a four out of five as well handling now as I said handling on this car is actually very good the shocks do a, a very good job it's just a shame that they don't have you know they're not a uh, a stronger shock uh, or don't come with aluminium shock caps which may prevent uh, the shock caps from popping off it's not a guarantee but it may prevent that from happening but I, ha I have to deduct a point for the substandard tires that they supply. Uh, it's unfortunate because I do like the tread pattern of them um, and I don't mind the wheels as well, but it, they're just, 
not a very good tire at all they just don't match uh, the buggy and it makes it very difficult to drive um, even with AVC I think I tried them with AVC as well it just the cars all over the place so for that reason it also gets a four out of five durability durability well uh, there's really not a lot to report I didn't really break anything with the exception of the um, spoiler mount back here uh, that I had to do a little bit of a mod with the um, with a zip tie and I may show you uh, this up close as well because this is something that um, it's kind of a little bit of a design flaw um, the spoiler is kind of held on by an extension from the roll cage and it kind of goes onto this little plastic clip that just holds onto a, another plastic rod that's underneath it. It's, it's kind of hard to explain on camera. It's best if you just uh, <laughs> have a look at it. Um, but uh, once the spoiler gets snagged on the ground, you do your wheelies or you, you, know, you flip over or whatever, uh, it kind of unclips itself. And over time, eventually it weakens this support where the spoiler is mounted to and eventually it breaks off. That's exactly what's happened to me. Good remedy is just to put a couple of small zip ties in here or even just a one good one and uh, hold it in place and stop that from unclipping and uh, you shouldn't have any problems there. So uh, that's one issue. The other issue of course is dog bones popping out uh, which is not really a big problem as long as you can find them you can pop them back in and of course the shock caps popping off as well. That's really the only issues that I had with this. Um, didn't really break any A-arms or you know buckle anything. There's really no issues like major Major issues uh, with this car as far as durability so for that reason I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5 as well uh, maintenance now given that this is a desert buggy and it's got this uh, cage on here it does make it a little bit tricky to work on in some cases if you're just swapping out shocks and just replacing the odd a-arm and even putting your dog bones back in everything is pretty standard However, um, if you do need to replace your servo like I did or you need to get into the receiver area and um, you know kind of change anything, you want to change electrics for whatever reason, you have to pretty much disassemble most of the car. So it makes it very tricky uh, to work on if you just want to get to one particular area, you might find that you have to remove most of the roll cage in order to access that area. So it just depends on which, what end of the car you're working on. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Now, a lot of people are uh, worried about um, part support for these armor vehicles. I've never had an issue getting parts. Uh, my local hobby shops actually started stocking armor recently, probably the last few months. I've seen more and more armor vehicles pop up on their shelves. Tower Hobbies always has parts in stock. And then you can even find parts on eBay, I think even Amazon. Um, they're all over the place. All you have to do is enter the part number into your Google search bar and you'll find a variety of different websites and locations where you can actually go and get parts from. The only thing is that there's not a lot of third-party companies making parts for, this, uh, for these types of cars. That said, the only parts that you'd really want to upgrade, such as your tires, perhaps your shocks, servo even, they're all generic parts. There's really nothing that's specific to this car. So you can find your shocks from pretty much any other brand that you want. Tires, are, you know, you get an abundance of choice. These, uh, they bolt onto 12 millimeter hexes. So it's pretty standard affair. It's nothing proprietary. Um, it's just a matter of finding what it is that you're after and you can get that from pretty much any brand. So um, if there was an issue with the A-arms or the gearbox or something specific to this car, fair enough, but I really haven't come across any issues. And if you do happen to be unlucky and you break something, there's parts all over the place. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a four out of five because I think part support is, is very good. Obviously it could be better with uh, third party companies making uh, specific parts for it if they choose to do so but like I said there really hasn't been a huge need for it last but not least now we are going into value now value I kind of had a bit of a toss-up on this one I wasn't quite sure which way I was gonna go because here's the thing with value the car retails for 369 US at Tower Hobbies comes with a charger and a nickel metal hydrate battery pack and of course it comes with your remote no batteries for the remote though they do give you some spare bits and pieces in, in the uh, box. You got some spare gearing. I think they give you a, a second spur gear and a, and a spare pinion as well so that you can reach your high speeds. And to me, that offers very good value. Its closest competition would probably be the uh, Team Associated SB. Um, I think it's called the SB, which is based on the two-wheel drive short course truck from Team Associated. Uh, that's more of a short course buggy. It's not so much a desert buggy like this one. Probably it's closest one would be the Pro, uh, Pro Line 
uh, SB buggy or Pro 2 buggy, I think it's called. But that's $320 as a kit. And then you still have to put more money on top, of course, to uh, get it up, you know, with a uh, motor, ESC, steering servo, and of course your radio, um, not to mention all the batteries and everything. So this kind of sits a little bit alone. There are other cars uh, out there in this style, such as the Viterra uh, Glamis, which I think has been discontinued. But around this price point, it's actually pretty fair. That said, the fact that it doesn't have these upgraded shocks um, and the tires are pretty poor and you do have to spend a little bit of extra money on the tires, it does bring the value of this car down a little bit in my opinion. Um, and of course it comes with a nickel metal hydrate battery pack which is pretty useless these days. Most people will just go straight to LiPo. Uh, I would prefer that they drop the price and then get rid of the um, uh, nickel metal hydrate battery pack and charger or at least uh, do what Tim Associated have done and uh, provide two different options. One where you get just the car and all its contents and two you can get a bit of a LiPo combo and uh, you know you pay a little bit more and you get uh, something to get you going if this is your first RC. That would be a nice option to have as well. So on that basis for value I give this one a 3 out of 5 which I think is a very fair score. Total score for this guy is a total of 26, which brings it up to about 74.28%, uh, which is not bad. It's about 7.5 out of 10. And I think that's a very fair score for this car. There's definitely some room for improvement here. Um, and uh, Armour really do have the opportunity to capitalize on this market, given that there isn't too much direct competition with this car and uh, and just yeah make it that much better uh, but that's really just you know my own personal opinion hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, video and the review if you did please be sure to give the video a thumbs up don't forget to check out the video description for more information on the buggy as well as where you can get one from and there'll be links in there to the previous videos of it as well i thank you all very much for watching and i will speak to you next time